And for those who will watch this live recording and who don't know me, it's Brother Sean. And I would like to invite you to come and join us at our table of many blessings, to come and share with us your love, your gifts, your wisdom. Come and experience the healing touch of all that is. I have lit our candle of peace and I now invoke the company of heaven to watch over our proceedings for the coming 30 minutes and that this humble offering is an offering from the heart for peace. So we recite the Celtic blessing which resonates with all our hearts. In the name of our beloved Father, Mother, God Supreme, who creates all life, in the name of the risen Cosmic Christ, who loves life, in the name of the Spirit, who is the fire, of life. In the name of Gaia, our beloved Earth Mother, for she nurtures the divine life in all of creation and the animal kingdom. In the name of all faith traditions and none, we welcome you, for you are sons and daughters of the Supreme my brother, my sister. We celebrate our spiritual diversity now as we gather around this table to listen to the voice of Spirit speak to our hearts. Welcome. And we begin this evening by just listening to a beautiful track called Shining Star. For that's what we really are. When I was weary and alone, you came and you carried me. When I was hurting, you were there to take all my pain. And you restored my faith in everything. I know my life will never be the same. To feel your wisdom and your love, it brings deep security. From the storm, with all the ground is sweet. And now I know you are my shining star. I truly feel your life affects my way. I feel it in my soul. Yeah. 
everything I do. What a lovely way to begin our 30 minutes. You are a shining star. That's what we are. A shining star in the Creator's garden. Although on this night we are aware that there are many of our brothers and sisters, especially on the northeast coast of America, where many have been displaced, where some have lost life, and many have lost all their treasured possessions. But we pray the spirit of that shining star will bring good from this tragedy and unite all people instead of worrying about, oh my God, the tree has landed on my car, whilst Tragic, yes, but what is more important? I see life as far more important and being a, being a part of a community that compassionately cares about life rather than material possessions. Insecurity strikes us all. And I'm no exception to the rule, having been displaced myself 12 years ago when we were flooded in North Wales. And for two years, the surgical unit was dispersed all over the whole of North Wales, making life very difficult. But let us come to this table with a positive mindset where we will see the hand of God, not as a punishment, but as a way of bringing us closer together in a time of crises. A time when we should be united in our hearts and not become indifferent, which society has become. Society is living on a knife's edge where many have lost even the respect of the sacred in this beautiful free gift of earth. And we know that with the three elements that came together in the last day or two on the East Coast, nature is in revolt. Gaia is weeping. For the children of a loving God who've become so preoccupied about self, yes, self, they have lost the heart in service. As is in every country of our world where there is disquiet, we need something like this dreadful catastrophe, Hurricane Sandy to bring people back to their sacredness. And the theme for this evening is All is Silence. I would like to share with you, my dear friends, some notes 
about this evening. When did we find a road the ruts were so deep and wedged the cartwheel until the axles writhed with pain that found an echo in our bones? We struggled out and we walked. Our feet sunk into sand or trod on hard sunburnt mud that cut our shoes or sandals. Hour after hour we went on, and at sunset we camped for the night, as many have done, and many still do, where there is chaos. There was no village by the wayside, but wherever there was a clump of trees, there was a group of mud huts, and there was always a well. These are the villages of India. The people plow the land and sow their crops, and then wait for harvest. The damp mists rise when the sun goes down, and out in the country all is silence. Wide spaces, lofty mountains, freedoms to go where you will, and a people always ready, with patience to listen to good news. Could anything be more attractive to a missionary? The silent awe of the dawn when the sun rises over the highest mountains in the world. Seen from the plains of India brings something into the soul that nothing else can. Alone with God in space ineffable and untellable, the soul is still, yes, the soul is still. Those mountains are the messengers to remind you and me that though they seem secure and unmovable, they may be removed. But there is something more than they. It is the Word of God, the Father, Mother, God Supreme. Who are we that such a treasure should be entrusted to. Let us reflect on those words. Let us for a moment just quieten our troubled mind. Just for a moment, let us sit in our oasis and let us just listen for our heartbeat. Can you hear it? Maybe not. Maybe your mind is so preoccupied or taken over by events of late. Or maybe you can. And if you place your first or second index fingers on your right or left wrist, you will feel a pulse. But that's no ordinary pulse. Yes, to the professional, it shows the heart is functioning. But to those of us on the spiritual journey, it is the heartbeat of God. But can you feel that heartbeat? Can you sense that beat in your life? Are you a lover of silence? Or does silence scare you, frighten you? I know many friends that when I used to go and visit them, you'd get the customary greeting, hello, how are you? In Ireland they have a custom, as soon as you've arrived home for the first time in a few years, when are you going back? And I used to take offence to that, but it was a polite way of saying, we want to make you stay welcome. But other friends... They'd have the television on, the ghetto blaster blaring from the kitchen, the world and its mother coming through the back door, children screaming, 
dogs barking, and you think, my God, oh, for some peace and quiet. Well, now we have it. We have peace and quiet. Let us focus on the mind. Let us give it permission to relax. And we do that by making sure we're comfortable for this short meditation. But as is customary, with every precious gift, it's important to say thank you. So we thank the Father, Mother, God, in the presence of Gaia, Kuan Yin, Magdalena, Mother Mary, and all the Ascended Masters, and our great spiritual teachers, for the gift of silence, because silence is central to understanding Christ Consciousness. And Christ Consciousness is Heart Consciousness. If we're living in crisis or afraid to be still, then silence will be a threat to us. And I see silence as something more than quiet. Silence is an internal language of love. It is the Divine's language of love. Silence is a gift that unites hearts to prayer, non-vocal prayer, prayer where the mind is relaxed, where you feel the heartbeat, the beat of God, and where in the stillness of the now, you can come into your divine center and listen. Christ Consciousness, Cosmic Christ 2012 are words, buzzwords. But unless we understand the meaning of silence, the power of silence, the blessings of silence, we might as well go on a one day trip to nowhere. Silence is a sacred tool it's a sacred tool that unlocks mystery. It is a gift. And like all gifts, it is not given to us willy-nilly. It is a gift of God for the soul to see the face of God, to hear the voice of God and to discern in silence what is God saying to my heart right now instead of running off on a tangent on a wild dream or chasing a wild card. Silence is a gift and it is given if we ask for it. But have we asked for silence? You'd be amazed how many people have an expectation where well, God knows my needs, so let him provide them. That is arrogance. I call it spiritual arrogance. How dare we? But that's the culture of today. It's called, I want, I will have. And I will get it. I may be wrong, but our life is a gift. It is not a possession. The house, apartment, caravan, mobile home where we live is a gift on loan 
the clothes we wear, our jewelry, our food, our car, automobile, is a gift on loan. Yes, we make the repayments, and so we should. But everything we have is a gift on loan. And how tragic that people today have put their possessions as their top priority. And it takes a dreadful disaster such as Sandy to make us realize how fickle we are. And despite our technology, despite our advancement in communication, I believe we are the poorest for it. So let us now, in the privacy of our own home, ask the Christ for the gift of silence. Take him to his word. He said, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you most surely. But have you asked? Let's ask. Let us first focus on our in-breath. And in that in-breath, as we breathe in, let us embrace silence, the gift of stillness. And in our outbreath, let us release the need for noise, the need for clutter. And let us be still now. And with every in-breath that we breathe, let us allow the healing properties of silence create stillness. Create harmony. Create balance. And facilitate a divine connectedness with the I am presence within us and around us. I would like us to imagine that we have found a place of stillness where we live, a place where we feel safe. It might be in the lounge or in the bedroom. It might be in the garden. It might even be in the kitchen, sat nearest to the kettle. Find that place now. Go there. Find your comfortable chair, the one you like. It might be a rocking chair. It might even be sitting or lying on the floor with your bean bag. Find it. Let us go there. And as you settle now, you become aware of your heartbeat because you have found your place where you are comfortable. And silence is about feeling comfortable. Because in that comfort zone, the Christ can speak. And he can show you things. He can share with you things. And he can allow you see the visions that he has for his people. And with every in-breath we are relaxed, we are safe. And we ask him for the gift of silence. And we just say, Father, Mother, God, Supreme, in the name of the Cosmic Christ, I ask 
but the gift of silence, the gift of being still in my life, in my mind, in my body, in my spirit. Bless me with this gift of silence so that I can hear you. that I can hold you and that you can hold me and suddenly the Christ stands before you and he says nothing but the silence is like God it is flowing from him and it has a soothing effect on our mind, allowing us now to appreciate the gift of silence. Be still, and in the silence, allow the Christ to share with you his love for you. And in the silence, allow your heart to breathe for the very first time, maybe, and feel relaxed and comfortable in your own skin. And with every in breath that you breathe, you are more relaxed and safe and cherishing the gift of momentary silence. But remember this, it is a gift. And all gifts from God have to be actioned by you and me by using the gift of free will to show that nothing is forced, nor can it be. For the Supreme is not a dictator, but a loving being of love. Be still now, and just stay in your heart, and remind yourself of these words, I am a beloved of God, I am a child of God. And I thank God for the gift of silence so that I can embrace all that I am as a beloved in service to love. Allow that love touch you now. Allow that love empower you, take back your power and self-heal from all anxiety, all tribulation and any nonsense that is alienating your heart from Christ consciousness.